Thank you for calling the Hollywood Bank of Commerce. How may I help you? Twelve million dollars, is that correct? What is your security code? A federal wire transfer. Your password, you. please? And what kind of wire would you like to send? Wire transfer. That account the number, account number you're debiting, please? Fine. Fine. Bank, please. Uh, the name of the bank. May I have the dollar amount of your transaction? That account. That's that account number? That account number? May I have any reference? Is there an intermediary bank? That account number, please. Fine. Let me read this. 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 Fine.
It's me. Hi. Is he here? He's in the kitchen. Did you tell him? I can't. I tried. Then I'm but... going to tell him. No, please. You don't understand. He doesn't have a clue about what's really going on. You know what I think? I think. I think. I think I stink. All right, what happened? Oh, it's my fault. I blew it. I'm sorry, Myra. My concentration is shot. Give yourself a break. Let the rest of us beat you up. Comments, please. Uh, Michael. Yeah, uh, I don't think that this scene is just about her telling her father that they want to get married. I think that he wants to get into her pants. Oh, God, you got your brain caught in your zipper again, Michael. No, 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 he wants to break the engagement, but I'm playing it like I already know she's going to fold. There's no tension, no obstacle. Oh, that's a little more like it. Good. Class, look, acting is all about choices, and strong choices demand great risks. I want to see strong choices. I want to see high risks. I'd also like to see a little tuition. Not one of you deadbeats is current right now. Uh, I'm all tapped out, Professor. Look, I'm not kidding. My landlord's gonna toss me out of here if I don't cough up some rent real soon. Now, I need some money. Sorry, Scott, they messed up my unemployment check again. I've got a catering job next month. Damn it, it's the same story every week. Can I help you? Uh, are you Scott McNally? Yeah. I was wondering, is, uh, I was interested would it be okay if I were to audit your class? Audit? <laughs> Hell, why not? Nobody else pays to study with me. Why should you? You don't think I'm trying to make a living at this, do you? <laughs> no, I'm the Mother Teresa of acting teachers. Sure, come on in. Have a seat. <laughs> Hello. Good choice, mein Führer. Definitely high risk. <laughs> You study, and you struggle, and you starve. And when it comes right down to the wire, it's that one part that makes or breaks an actor, you know? And that's what this Detective Angelo part could do for me. Because, man, I am down to the wire. I mean, I cannot do these parts anymore that have no meat in them. It's like, it's like, like having sex with someone you don't love. It's all just technique. I want to feel some passion. I need to be in love. Love is great. But how are you supposed to survive in this town until the right part comes along? That's my problem. I had this crazy idea that teaching acting would pay my rent. I apologize for making you the butt of my exceedingly rude temper. You just happened into my line of fire. Good. Glad there's no hard feelings. Rachel! Always remember your keys when you make a big exit like that. It's not a climactic to have to go back. Do you have any idea how hard it was for me to walk into your studio and ask to audit your class? You have no right to humiliate people like that. Look, I said I was sorry, and I meant it. How'd you know my name? Kieran. What's your last name? Coleman. How do you do, Rachel Coleman? Not very well. I'm tired. I'm hungry. My car was stolen today. I'm sorry. You already said that. Yeah, this town has a way of kicking people when they're down. No kidding. You, know, you, you build up all this internal rage, and then something happens, and you blow, and you snap at somebody who doesn't deserve it. Exactly. Or you give them a face full of white wine. I'm sorry about that. Good. That makes two of us. How about I buy you a hamburger, and then we'll both feel a whole lot better. Thanks, but um, I'm kind of sick of hamburgers. What are you hungry for? What I heard in your class, you can't afford what I'm hungry for. Oh, yeah? Well, you'd be surprised what I can afford. Would you like a drink before dinner? Sure. Right this way. Two vodka tonics for you. Sir? 
A uh, white wine spitzer for the lady and a vodka on the rocks for me. You got it. What are we doing here? At Glen Gibbons, at Tatami Foam Futons, Shoji Lamps and Partitions. Roger Oglethorpe, Rattan Waterbeds. Uh, how you doing tonight? Nice to see you. And this is Mrs. Oglethorpe. Oh, uh, hi there. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Shoji Lamps and Partitions, Glen Gibbons. There you go. Thank you. The best things in life are free. You're a party crasher. Oh, I like to think of it as a good acting exercise. Bill Mids. Imported lacquer and leather sofa systems. Guy Starbuck, macrame wall hangings and redwood nightstands. And this is Mrs. Starbuck. Oh, Mrs. Starbuck, nice to meet you. And where are you from? Honey? Altoona, Pennsylvania. We flew in from Pittsburgh, but the plane was late, so we missed the wedding ceremony, and then they lost our luggage, so we had to come to the reception looking like this. For crying out loud. Oh. Can you believe it? 3,000 miles from home, and we don't even have a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's awful. Are you friends of the groom or the bride? Bride. Oh. Bride. Mm. Groom. Actually, we know them both. He knows the bride, and I know the groom. Oh, look, darling, it's Priscilla and Rodney Whitehead. Excuse us. Hi. She's a beautiful bride. What are you thinking right now? I'm not. You? Right now? I think I'm dreaming. I believe in dreams. Especially when they come true. Those are the only kind to have. So what are you doing in my dream? Mm -hmm. What are you doing in my I used to have a place up in Laurel Canyon, but I couldn't swing the rent on that in a studio, too, so I just moved in here. Where do you sleep? In the master bedroom. Where is that? Stand right here. Voila. What do you think? You stand. Right here.
There's room for two. Detective Angelo, NYPD. Detective Angelo, NYPD. Detective Angelo, NYPD. Good morning. Would you tell Mr. Marston that Mr. McNally is here? You're late. What are you talking about? It's 11 o'clock on the dot. Don't you ever check your machine? Your audition was moved up an hour to 10 o'clock. Marston had to catch a noon flight back to New York. What? I didn't see any message on the machine. I told you to get a new machine months ago. Why didn't you call me last night? Why didn't you... Don't you dare blame this on me. I called you as soon as I had the information. So when's he coming back? He's not coming back, Scott. He's going to cast Detective Angelo out of New York. It's over. No, no, can't you... No, I can't. I'm always making excuses for you. I sat in a room with that British twit for 40 minutes making excuses for you. You and your high standards. You won't do this kind of work. You won't do that kind of work. And then when I finally find the kind of work you will do, you don't show up. I don't know why I care. I don't know why. I can't help you anymore. You didn't get the part, huh? I didn't even get the chance to get the damn part. What are you doing here? I was on my lunch break. I wanted to see how it went. I'm sorry. You didn't hear the phone ring this morning? No. When I was in shaving, you didn't hear the phone ring and, and somebody tried to leave a message on the machine? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I mean, I don't know. I was asleep. Look, I hate buses. I had to take two of them to get over here, and I didn't come to be your punching bag. I'm sorry you didn't get the part, but it's not my fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I seem to have a knack 
for taking things out on you. Well, I'm a real winner, huh? You know what I'd do if I were you? Yeah. Take the rest of the day off and take you on a picnic. Think fast. Picnic? Where? Here. Here at the beach. I hope you like cold lobster and fresh melon balls. like chicken on rye and potato salad to me. And this beach looks a lot like a studio I owe three months rent on. We can pretend, can't we? We can pretend that this is the beach and that's lobster and we're rich. I am tired of pretending. Tired of waiting for the big break. I'm tired of being poor. Scott, we don't have to have a bottle of champagne. Hey, 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 if we're gonna have a picnic at the beach, let's have a picnic at the beach. Let's do it with style. in my checking account. Excuse me. There's something wrong with my checking account? Window number two. No, no, see, there's $20,000 in Window me. number two. If you'd like, I can write it down for you. Sorry, there's been a mistake Excuse with my check. <sighs> Excuse me, there's $20,000 in my checking account that doesn't belong to me. Excuse me, there's $20,000 in my checking account that doesn't belong to me. There is? Yes, there is. I'd like to give it back if you don't mind. Why? It's not my 20 grand. It's in your checking account, right? Yes. So it's your money. I wish it were. You should wish for brains. You already got the money. Wait, 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 wait. Do you work here? No, I'm waiting for my husband. He's been on that line over there since I was your age. All he wants is a dozen penny wrappers. What did they say? Window number two, window number two. It's like their mantra. Did you tell them? Forget it, you know. It's their problem, not mine. Let them figure it out. But you have to tell them. I tried to tell them. What are you doing? Scott, you can't do this. It's not your money. To take it all out, just enough to get you the best lunch at the beach that money can buy. You don't have to do this for me. Well, you're taking the afternoon off work, and you can't afford that. I don't want to do this for you. What if you get into trouble? Don't worry about it, okay? It's just a loan. I'll pay it back with my next residual check.
wish I was rich. Really rich. I want my rent, Mr. Magnani. Who the hell do you think you are? The Gestapo? Three months. Three thousand dollars you owe me. Wait a minute. You, you can't just barge in here like this. I told you, no more hide and seek. I want my rent money. I want it right now. I don't have it. You don't have it. Then I want you out of here today. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I talking about? I got it. Scott. No, no, I'll write you a check. No, 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 no more of your funny checks. I want you out of here today. Both, you get out. No, no, wait, Mr. Agajanian, wait, wait a minute. Mr. Agajanian? Mr. Agajanian? I got your money, okay? The bank opens in a couple of hours. I'll go in, I'll get a certified check. You're out. Today, you're out of my son and me will throw you out. Damn it, you can't do that. Don't tell me what I do to you. I have my rights. Oh, yeah, well, you can't evict me without due notice. This is your due notice. You're out, you bum. You're out. I'll have a certified check for $3,000 on your desk before noon today. So you can't do squat to me. What are you looking at? bank finds out it made a mistake. Three thousand dollars is a lot of money, Scott. Yeah, but this studio is the only way I have of making any money right now. I'll just have to get tough and collect on all the past due tuition everybody owes me. And I'll pay it back somehow. It just seems like this money is too good to be true. No, you're too good to be true. Hmm. Your answering machine doesn't seem to be working. It's dead. I I killed it. Good. Um, I'm sorry about. I, I I wasn't very professional. I wasn't professional at all. I know how important that part was to you, and I know you didn't get that message. I made it all about us, about me. I'm angry because you're not perfect. And I'm mad at myself for loving you, even though you're not perfect. But I do. I just do. All right, so where's my morning coffee?
Meg? Meg? I'm sorry, I feel terrible. No, don't. Meg and I have been over for months. We're just slow learners. Is it your birthday today? No. It's next Monday. Meg was never very good with dates. Well, I guess I'd better go to work. Bye. Hey, how about a date tonight? You sure? Yeah. Okay. What time do you want me to pick you up? Eight o'clock. Okay. Okay. Hey, what's your address? Oh. Um. I'll wait up front because the door buzzer's broken. Mm -hmm. Number two. Okay. Have a nice date. You too. Okay, so I make this payable to the bank? No, make it out to the party it's going to, and then I'll put the certified stamp on it. D does my account reflect my last deposit? Deposit was a corporate wire transfer. Good. Well, I'm glad they, they did a wire transfer this time. You know, I think a wire transfer is the only way to go. Don't, don't you agree? Oh, my, yes. Especially with large sums of money. Checks can get lost or stolen, and they can take days to be cleared. A wire transfer is posted almost instantly. Really? I mean, I knew they were fast, but not that fast. Well, basically, a wire transfer is just one bank's computer calling another bank's computer. I'd just like to check, because a computer can make a mistake, right? Oh, it happens, but we're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> I'll bet. Hello. Mr. Anginian? Paid in full. Big deal. I told you I'm gonna pay it all back. Anyway, 
There's this great sushi restaurant that I'm dying to try. You mean expensive sushi restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want anything to do with this. Oh, it's, it's just like a game of Monopoly, you know? It's like that, uh, that chance card, bank error in your favor. Don't sweat it. $20,000 mistake, but a $10 million mistake? Hell, you think somebody'd be paying attention with that kind of money? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go to the bank and tell them what's going on before I get too far in over my pin sheet. Well, I can help you pay this back. No, 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 this is my problem, not yours. I don't want you to get into trouble. Look, it'll, it'll, it'll be all right. I'll just, I'll, I'll plead insanity. Look, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. I'm just being paranoid. Affirmative, red 1965 Mustang. Put your hands in there! Scott McNally, keep your hands away from your body. You're under arrest for murder in the first degree. Why would I pay my rent if I was going to kill my landlord? It doesn't make any sense. That's why they call them senseless murders on the TV. Makes sense to me. Pegajani and evict you. You and he have a fight on the sidewalk outside the front of your building. Then a few hours later, you go over to Agajanian's office and settle your account in more ways than one. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry that the man is dead, but I did not kill Agajanian. I didn't even know he was there. You put a check on the man's desk, but you don't see the body lying on the floor behind the desk? I wasn't looking for a body lying on the floor behind the desk. Well, we have a parking ticket that says you were parked outside of Agajanian's office during the time frame of the murder. What do you say to that? I say I was just running in to drop off the check. If I was planning on sticking around to kill the guy, I would have put a dime in the meter. The coroner says that Agajanian's head was crushed in with a tire iron. When's the last time you used your tire iron, Scott? This morning, I had a, a flat tire. And after you changed your flat, what did you do with the tire iron? Put it back in the trunk of my car. You put it back in the trunk of your car? Yeah. Well, we checked the trunk of your car, and it's not there. So where did it go? Did it just disappear? Oh, hell. To the left, please. Are you okay? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Listen, I talked to a bail bondsman, and he said that he can get you out for $35,000. His office is right across the street. It's called Fairweather Bail and Bonds, and he said that he could take a check. I can't do that. Did you tell the police about the money? Hell no. I'm in enough trouble. Look, I just... I just don't think that I should spend any more of the money until I've talked to a lawyer. I think you should get out of here first, and then you see a lawyer. I'm gonna nail you down! Well, quiet! You're never a big face! I know where you live! What are you looking at, pretty boy? Who are you looking at me? You better stop! Look at me! I don't want your face! Hey! 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 You can't stay in here. You're dead! I'm gonna come out of this place! You're done! How can they just impound your car like that? It's not my car anymore. It's their evidence. Are you hungry? <sighs> Let's just go back to my place. I need a shower. Okay. It's Cam 93. What? License plate. Oh, it's my roommate. Her initials, K-A-M, Kathleen Ann Moore. Is she a cheerleader? High school, yeah. How did you know that? I don't know. Sounds like a cheerleader. Oh, the lock's been changed. Great, that's just great. You can stay with me. No, oh, Kathleen's family's in town. You can't. They're that's staying right. with us. That's all right. I'm allergic to roommates anyway. Get away from me! Ah, let go! LAPD, that's enough! 
killed my father. They killed my father! We know. We know. That's why we have courts. You want to press charges against Junior here? Nah. Say thank you to Mr. McNally. I'm gonna kill you, you son. Say thank you to Mr. McNally. Thank you. All right. Good. Go home. You okay? Fine. You? Yeah. All right. You say you're an actor, but I've never heard of you. So how can you afford 35 grand to make bail? Huh? Where'd you get that kind of money? It's an inheritance. Uh, why don't you play it straight with me? I mean, it would save us both a lot of wear and tear. I didn't kill Agajanian. Then why did you hide the tire iron? I don't know. I don't know. The money has to have something to do with Agajanian. Or with him being killed with my tire iron. Oh, God, what was I thinking? How could I spend that money? I guess what I should do is give myself a good lawyer. But right now, all I want to do is just find some place to hide. You mean run away? Mm. You're just tired. We'll figure something out. We? I love you, Scott. You're the only person in this town that means anything to me. Whatever you do, I want to be with you. Traffic ticket, certified check on the desk, fight on the sidewalk. It's all just circumstantial evidence, but they could still make a strong case against you. And if they find your tire iron with samples of your landlord's blood... Well, they could ask for the death penalty. I, I, I'm not quite sure what, what you're saying, but I guess what I want to know is, can, can you get me out of this? Well, I'll give it my best shot, Tom. It's Scott. Scott, you'll have to excuse me. I have a luncheon date. Well, listen, th th there's something else that I wanted to mention. See, there's, uh, there's $10 million in my checking account. I don't know where it came from. Come again? Uh, it all started a few days ago. First $20,000 showed up in my account, and then yesterday I found another $10 million in there. And, and, and for a while I thought it was a bank error, you know? But now I'm not so sure. Have you spent any of this money? Well, uh, yeah, some of it. How much? Uh, a lot. More than a thousand dollars? Ten thousand? Twenty? Forty? Fifty? Fifty is in the neighborhood. You know, but thirty-five of that was bail, so, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that back. And is part of it this ten thousand dollar retainer? Apart from the mysterious deposits, do you have any money of your own? Well, uh, no. Well, what we have here is a possible murder one and probably several counts of grand larceny. Very serious charges. For which you would have to be tried separately, which would involve a great deal of time and expense, years, and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I suggest you find a lawyer who's willing to represent you for free. Because neither I nor any other attorney can be paid with stolen money. They have laws against that.
Is Pat O'Brien dead? Yep. Well, no wonder he's not in the listing here. I need a flinty Irish grandfather. How about uh, Art Carney? Art Carney? That's good. Thanks. Sure. He still works, doesn't he? Yeah, I think so. I'm thinking of quitting myself. You? You could never quit acting. You did. I wasn't as good at it as you. That's debatable. You're just going to start your life all over again? That's, that's what I'm thinking. You really love her that much? Look, Meg, I'm... You don't have to tell me you're sorry because you're in love with someone else. I appreciate the thought, but... When are you leaving? Probably tomorrow. That's one thing I always liked about you. What's that? You know how to think on your feet. Some of us have a hard time making choices. Yeah, well, it doesn't mean I always make the right choice. I didn't say you did. Is Rachel Coleman there? Rachel? She got off at 6. No, I don't. We don't give out home phone numbers, sir. Sir, you could be Ed McMahon from the publisher's sweepstakes, and I wouldn't give out the number. Hello? Scott? Rachel, there you are. Listen, we need to talk. The man with the tire iron wants to talk to you. What? The man with the tire iron wants to talk to you in person. Where are you? 548 Laporte. Scott, he says he'll hurt me if you bring the police. Rachel, don't. Rachel? a gun here behind me when I left the restaurant and, and he brought me here and he kept asking me about you and asking me if you were having fun spending all that money so when you knocked on, on the door I tried to scream out to warn you and I have to call the police. 
No. No. Oh, Doctor, we can't. No, 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 that's just arrest you for murder, too. Transfer operation. We have to. We have to get out of town. We have. We have to think of some way to take the money and run. What about the tire iron? Is this, the, 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 that would prove that you didn't kill your landlord. The only fingerprints on that tire iron are mine. He was going to blackmail me with it for the money in my account. Well, then we have to find it. Don't oh, forget it. It's a waste of time. The tire iron was worth ten million dollars to him. There's not going to be any place where we can find it. Someone will find that body if we don't get it out of here. Come on, give me a hand. I killed him. Dear God, what did I do? You saved my life. That's what you did. Scott, we have to get out of here. Go someplace like South America or those places that the Nazis went after the war, like Uruguay or Argentina or someplace hey, like that. Hey, okay, I'll take care. this $10 million, Mr. McNally? By wire transfer. By wire transfer to Buenos Aires. Don't you think that's the best way? The only way, of course. Then you just have your bank here in Los Angeles wire the funds to our Buenos Aires office, and they will immediately post the deposit to your account. That's it? That's it. So, this movie you're producing in Argentina, what is it called? The Easy Life. I love Buenos Aires this time of year, don't you? Now, here's your ticket and your companion's ticket. And you have the itinerary and the receipts in here, okay? Great, thanks. Now, you need to arrive at the airport at least one hour before departure. So you can get your seat assigned. You can check your bags and make in a your seat selection. Parking parking lot at LAX this afternoon. So Airport police officials bags, speculate that a thief one. broke into the car no searching for valuables, then fled, leaving the trunk open when the body was discovered. The yet-to-be-identified male victim was wrapped in what Sir? appears to be a shower curtain. Sir? The scene would not confirm the Are you okay? Right, sorry. Got your tickets, your receipts. You're all set. Uh, great, thanks. Is Rachel here? Sure is. She's on a break. Back table, over there. Rachel, we got trouble. I need your passport right away. Love? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I thought you were Rachel. What do you mean? 
I am. Who are you? No, no, I mean uh, the other Rachel, Rachel Coleman. What are you talking about? I'm the only Rachel Coleman around here. Well, what do you want with my passport? Are you from immigration or something? Hey, I'm an American citizen for crying out loud. Is, is there a Rachel Coleman living here? Who? Rachel Coleman. I, I picked up a woman named Rachel Coleman the other night who, who, who lives here. Never heard of her. She has a roommate, uh, Kathleen. Kathleen Ann Murphy. Never heard of her. Are you sure? I've lived here for 30 years. What more can I say? More. Kathleen Ann Moore. Never heard of her either. Have you got a customer, a regular, named Kathleen? No. Kathleen Ann Moore? Nope. Oh, damn it. Well, it was uh, Kathy. Used to come in a lot. It was like a year or so ago. Yeah, she worked down the street. At the bank. Hi, uh, you got a Kathleen Moore here? Yes, we do. Your name? Tony. Uh, I work in the garage downstairs. We had a little accident with her car. Oh, no. Her line's busy. I'll go get her. Hey, uh, I was supposed to detail uh, Mr. Reinhardt's Jag for him today. He's out sick. Oh, he hurt his back playing golf again, huh? I don't know. Miss Moore didn't say. Hi. Can I have suite 405, please? Sorry, Mr. McNally's been out all day. Well, then, please tell Mr. McNally that Rachel called, and I'll be there in about mm, an hour. An hour? Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen Moore, Operations Banker of the Year. Lake Tahoe, 1991. I want the tire iron. I don't have it. I know that. I looked for it. Where is it? I didn't kill Agajanian. Stephen did that. I didn't know anything about it till after it was over. That's the truth, Scott. You and Reinhardt were using me to move the money out of the country. That's what this is all about, isn't it? Yes. Cops found Reinhardt's body a couple of hours ago. But according to the news, they haven't identified him yet. 
Get dressed. We have to get back to the hotel before Hallahan puts out an APB on me or we'll never get out of town. You mean you're still going through with this? What choice do I have? We'll be together, Scott. I'll make you happy, I promise. Get dressed. I love you. And I'll... When we get to Buenos Aires, we'll split the money 50-50. And that'll be the end of it. I don't like surprises, Scott. You didn't tell me about that $10 million in your bank account. That's quite an inheritance. DA is going to go back to court tomorrow and see that your bail is raised. I don't trust you. I don't trust you either. I mean, what's your story? Are you a gold digger? Maybe an accomplice after the fact? Say, do you know anything about a missing tire iron? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't. Well, I thought... Maybe you were a mind reader. Read my mind. Go on. Read it. Yeah, you see, I'm smarter than you think. We're gonna be on you like diaper rash. So don't even think about blowing town. watching us. Like diaper rash is right. Those two look like they're barely out of diapers themselves. Now, how are we going to get out of L.A. with the cops following us everywhere? Trust me. How are you moving the money? By wire to an account in Buenos Aires. Do you approve? Either Uruguay or Argentina would be fine, but you made the best choice. Considering you're the expert, that's quite a compliment. Who does the money belong to? An international holding company in London. They routinely make large money transfers from there to here by wire. Your account number was identical to theirs, except for the last digit. It was the safest way to divert the money. That way, if the deposits were discovered, we could have passed it off as a bank error. Simple slip of a finger on a keypad. So the first 20,000 was the bait, right? Right. We wanted to see what you would do. And I took the bait. Right. Then we knew we had you. What made you and Reinhardt so sure that I'd move the money out of the country for you? That was my job. I guess I made it easy for you, didn't I? Too easy. I want my name on that account in Buenos Aires. I want the tire iron. I told you, I don't have it. I don't know where it is. Well, if I put your name on the account, how do I know you won't kill me when we get to Buenos Aires and take all the money? Trust me. I think we should talk. About what? About us. What about us? Were you telling the truth when you said you loved me? Yes. Yeah, well, I 
Yes, I'm just going to have to take your word for it, aren't I? I want you to know everything. I know everything I need to know. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. I left for Argentina without you. I guess you don't trust me. I think we're being followed. I know. Ah, good morning. Good morning. Here you go. Thanks a lot. They're across the street now. I see that. Oh, that one. Thank you. I better not go inside. Somebody might recognize me. You stay in front of the door where I can see you. Yes, sir. Get a copy of the wire transfer. I want to make sure the money goes into the right account. Yes, ma'am. Of the refrigerator. Finish packing this stuff for me. I'll call a cab. Why can't we take my car? Just do what I tell you. Yeah, I know. Trust me. Cab's here. Come on. Here. No, leave the suitcases. Let's go. What do you mean, leave the suitcases? I got a plane to catch to Buenos Aires. She's gonna come with me or not? Lock the door, just pretend to. Scott, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, you're still a bit of a mystery to me, too.
Why don't you just have the cab driver pull over and you go tell those idiot cops everything? Why don't you just turn us both in? Why are you going through with this? I don't have any choice. You know that. Unless I want to go to jail, and I don't. I'm finished in this town. This town is finished with me, is more like it. I'm 40 years old. I'm broke, homeless, carless, careerless. And I've lost someone I cared a great deal about. I thought you and Meg were old history. I'm talking about Meg. I'm talking about Rachel Coleman. Going to the ladies' room. Would you like to come with me? Oh, thank you. Grab my bill, please. I'll be checking out. Yes, sir. I'll wait. You wanted to talk to me? something you want. We wouldn't get far without them, would we? Hold on a minute. Way. We're not going to LAX. I just wanted the cops to think that we were. The flight we're catching to Buenos Aires leaves out of San Francisco in two hours. What about our luggage? I paid the cabbie that picked us up at your place to go back and get the bags. He's going to meet us at the Long Beach airport, and then we'll catch a flight to San Francisco from there. 
Why did you and Reinhardt frame me for Agajanian's murder? I told you I didn't have anything to do with that No shot. more lies, no more games. I want the truth now. I'm telling you the truth. Stephen killed him because... Because why? Because he saw that I was falling in love with you. He no longer trusted me. Come on! It's the truth. The tire iron was Stephen's insurance to make sure that I wouldn't double-cross him and run off with you. He wanted a way to get rid of you. I, I killed him to protect you. That was a setup. You staged the whole thing. You were going to kill him all along. That was just a way to do it and put me in your debt. No! The original plan was just to dump you once we'd moved the money. The night I killed Stephen, he told me he was going to kill you once we had the money. There had to be other suckers with similar account numbers to mine. Why me? Why'd you choose my account to divert the money? There were three others with account numbers that would have worked, but you were perfect. You had nothing going for you. Nothing to lose. You erased that message that Meg left on my answering machine about the audition, didn't you? Yes. You were behind it all, everything. You played me and Reinhardt like, like puppets. I wasn't supposed to happen like this. I wasn't supposed to fall in love with you. Huh. You know, you, you really should have been an actress instead of a banker because you are good. Really good. I was an actress before I got into banking. Why'd you quit? I couldn't make any money at it. They're getting ready to close the gate. Do your tickets and your boarding passes. It's gate four. Hurry, and I'll call them and tell them you're coming. made the wrong one. You have to come. You can't stay here. No, go on. Go. It's a joint account. You won't have any trouble getting the money once you get to Buenos Aires. I'm not going without you. Oh, just the play's over. Just save it. I love you, Scott. I never Jeez, lied to you stop about it, that. Will you I stop love it. you and you still love me. I know that. You have to come with me. I'm begging you. I don't care about the money. I want you. Changing keys in here and step back through the gate, please. This is the last call to flight number We need to open your bag, sir. What? Would you open your suitcase for me, please? Suitcase, please.
I was really a cop. I just thought that you were kind of phoning it in. Uh, at least I got her to give me the tire iron. Well, I had an inner monologue going. You were just doing your Eric Estrada imitation. Oh, here's your stuff, mister. The accent was all wrong. I was doing Brooklyn. I got to work on my sense of place. You're a good actor, too. Better than you. Ten million dollars. Well, you were right about the money. It was too good to be true. We could have had it all. We were good together. And I was right about you. You were too good to be true. What are you doing in here? Taking a nap? Rewinding the tape. Yeah, did you get everything? Yeah, I got it. All right, well, let's uh, get her to the car. My pleasure. How'd you like my death scene? Not bad. A lot better than that uh, diaper rash routine you pulled last night. I'm still seeing stars. Well, that was my first performance. I mean, you told me, keep it real. I mean, I think I'm a natural. A few acting lessons wouldn't hurt. Well, I might take you up on that. For you, there'd be no charge. Professional courtesy. Really? Thanks. Thanks for, for trying it my way. Thanks for believing in me. Well, sometimes it takes an actor to catch an actor. See you in the movies. Yeah. I think this will hurt my career. What career? <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to start all over again. Think I can? Sure. If you have the right connections. You know show business. It's all about who you know. Well, I had a friend, this woman who's a casting director. She always believed in me, no matter what. Had a friend? Have a friend. That's the right kind of friend to have. As a matter of fact, she's the best friend I have in this crazy town. So maybe there's hope for you. Maybe your friend can help get you work so you can pay back the bank. Well, I made a deal with the bank. Why would they make a deal with you? 
You'd be surprised what some people would do for $10 million. Hmm. 